Hello and welcome to what will most likely be the very last video in this course. If we take a step back and look at what we have done over the last couple of weeks, and if we reflect on what we have learned, many of you will find that you have learned a lot. Uh, most of you didn't know any programming since before, but today you're solving fairly complicated problems. And those of you who knew a bit of programming since before, I hope you have solidified that knowledge and maybe even learned a thing or two along the way. The very first thing I mentioned when we met 10 weeks ago was how I had seen a demo of OpenAI Codex, an AI writing code, and how that maybe uh, in a few years could be a tool that we as programmers could use in our daily lives. And what better way to end the course than to return to where we started? The outline for this video is that I will first briefly mention a few words about OpenAI, Codex and Copilot. Then after that, I will ask you to go watch another video before you come back to this one where we will explore a practical example in Visual Studio Code. And just a few highlights from the timeline of OpenAI so far. So the company was introduced in 2015 and in 2019, their OpenAI 5 defeated the Dota 2 World Champions. And in the same year, 2019, Microsoft decided to invest and partner with OpenAI to support their struggle to develop a beneficial AGI. And then this year, 2021, uh, the OpenAI Codex was introduced. The most exciting part in this context is probably the Codex. It is an AI system that translates from natural language to code. More technically, it is a descendant of the GPT-3 model that is trained on both natural language and billions of lines of code from publicly available sources. Or in other words, it is an AI system that we can talk to using natural language. It then interprets what we want done and produces the code to accomplish that task. Microsoft used this uh, codex to create an extension for Visual Studio Code that acts as your own personal AI programming buddy. But to better understand the capabilities of codex, I strongly recommend that you first go watch their presenta presentation video, which is linked in the description before you continue this video. And when you come back, we will use this tool to explore how it can help us solve one of our own tasks. Now that you're back, wasn't that a cool presentation? I think so. But it would be even cooler if we could try to use this tool for ourselves and see if it is as good as it seems. And that is what we will do next. As an example, I was thinking that we could use task number one from exercise seven. And in this task, we are going to read the content of a file. Then we're going to use CSS cipher to encode it. And then we write the result to a second text file. And I was also thinking that maybe we could do the extra task down here as it is a continuation of task one. And down here, we are analyzing the, the cipher text to get the frequency of each letter and present the result using, for example, matplotlib graphs. So let's switch over to Visual Studio Code and start writing code. And I haven't created a plan for this because I want to see what my AI body can do. So let's see what we can get out of our AI body. I'll, I'll start writing uh, a comment for the first thing I want to do, which is to open a file and read the content of that file. Uh, 
And we can see as I type, it suggests to me, uh, maybe this is what you want to type. Uh, so it gives me suggestions all the time to, to make it easier for me. And I can accept them or not. And here it suggests to me that, oh, this is probably the code you want uh, if you want to uh, read something from a file and return it as a string. All right, so I accept it. And it, now my AI body suggests, all right, if you have read from a file, the next step is probably to write it to a file. So if I have read something from a file, you probably also want to write something to a file. So yeah, I'll accept that comment. And I also accept the code that it wants to give me for writing to a file. And the next thing I want to do is not what it suggests here, which is what we just did. Instead, I want to create this Caesar cipher. So I'll write a comment for that use. And we can see it suggests to me as I'm typing what I might want to do. And it also gives me suggestion uh, for the code that I might want to write. And if I want this code, I can just press tab to accept it. And um, without looking at it too much, it looks like the correct code. So we'll just assume that it gives me the correct code. The next thing I want to do is not as the AI suggests to decrypt a string. Instead, what I want to do is test what we have done so far. So I want to create my main function here. And let's see if I can type correctly. And given what I have already got in my script, it suggests that maybe this is the code that you want next. Uh, and it looks like exactly what I want to do. I want to take a file name, I want to read the content, I would like to have a key and then encrypt that plain text and store the content to a, a second file. All right. Um, and it also says, all right, if you have written a main function, you probably want to call it too. All right, so without writing a single line of code, we now have code that potentially uh, solves the problem. There is one thing we need to do, and that is to create this text file that contains our plain text. So let's create that in here. And I'll add some, some message in here. Hello, everyone. And we go back and let's try to run it and see what happens. We see that we get this ciphertext dot txt so it looks like it has worked um let's go and check and it looks like uh, caesar cipher so it solved the problem for us so without writing a single line of code we have with the help of our ai body solved th this task but what about the extra task? Can our AI body help us with that too? We'll see, we'll check if we can create a function for calculating the frequency of each letter and also uh, somehow plot it. So let's start with the first thing. And we can see it's already suggesting to me what I, probably want to write. So we'll accept that code. And then let's see if we can also uh, create a function for plotting this frequency analysis that we did. And I want the letters on the x-axis and the frequency on the y-axis. So let's see, it suggests some code to me here. And let's see if we can get what we want. 
And as you saw, if you don't like the first suggestion, you can look at other suggestions. And I think this one looks promising. So I'll pick this one. One thing that we must make sure is that, all right, if we are using matplotlib, we can either, as suggested by our AI buddy, uh, import it here, but I think it is a little bit nicer to uh, have it in the top here. So I'll move, just move the import up here. All right, and if we have these two functions, let's try them out. So, um, all right, it suggests that maybe with what I have in my script now, what I want to do is to do a frequency analysis on the ciphertext. And yes, it is. Uh, and then I also want to plot it. So it suggests that to me. Let's try to run it and see what we get. And we can see that it uh, correctly found the code to, to display a bar chart in matplotlib for us. So what can we take from, from this example? Well, we saw that I didn't have to write many lines of code here. What I did was that I used plain text or natural language to instruct uh, my AI programming body to, to write the code for me. And as we saw here in the end, we managed to solve both the first task, which was the CISA cipher, and the extra task by doing a frequency analysis and also showing a bar chart. As we have seen in the video by OpenAI and in our very own example, this tool is so powerful that I think it will impact how we as programmers work in the future. Today, the biggest emphasis is put on writing code. And don't get me wrong, this will still be important in the future. But I think it will be even more important to be able to understand the problem and break it down into subproblems. Writing the code, that will most likely be easier as our AI assistant will help us. However, we still need to be able to write code on our own because we need to understand the code generated for us and potentially even correct it. But in the future, maybe our role as programmers will change. Thank you for watching this video and good luck with your future coding.